Okay, not much of a format change, but uh, just want to get this video done. I'm going to show you how I wrap my fingers now. Good old duct tape. The, uh, the lighting at night is okay, but I, uh, I do need lighting for seeing the flake scar pattern and daylight seems to be the best lighting for that. So I may not do the uh, the Clovis napping at night. Uh, actually, I probably won't. I'll be using, or well, trying to use the daylight for looking at the flake scar pattern while I'm napping. This is just regular duct tape. And I find it more effective to use the duct tape than a leather glove or partial leather glove or finger wraps or whatever out of leather because this doesn't allow the chips to go inside when I have the open bottoms on the leather glove uh, the partial glove the chips go inside and when I bend my fingers they get caught in there anyway I'll try to do this quickly just to just to show you And these, these three fingers get the most damage when I'm flint napping. I also get some, some uh, cuts in here, so I'll put a strip of tape across here. When I'm wrapping, I gotta make sure I can bend my fingers at least a little bit. Okay, not very primitive, but it works works pretty well okay so I'll be using a uh, raw piece of Texas chert for this Clovis it's just a simple uh, spall off a large angular nodule uh, one change is I bought a uh, copper sphere which seems to work pretty good for uh, roughing it out this is uh, one and a quarter inch diameter solid copper Lasts a lot longer than my hammer stones. I've been using this for uh, about three or four weeks now, and it's just got a little bit of uh, damage to the surface, and that's it. Now, with uh, Clovis preforms, they start out pretty thick, and then there's a lot of end thinning. So let me, I'm gonna try to run some flakes across. I just dragged it across the uh, cinder block over there to, get, to dull that. See if I can run a flake down here. Not too bad. Slightly ground again. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Yeah, that platform wasn't low enough. It's a little bit short for a Clovis, but it's uh, good enough.
Hopefully I won't lose too much length. I had to be careful about leaving enough material in here. around that edge a little bit. I have a habit of now of using the concrete blocks as my abraders. It's a lot quicker. Actually wondering if this is too small, but I think I'm going to go ahead and continue. Now the first stage is called the primary biface. We already passed that stage, and we're approaching the secondary biface stage, where all the cortex is removed. So once the cortex is removed. It'll be a secondary biface. And of course, this would be would have been done with antler or a soft hammer stone. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but at the Galt site, there was only one hard hammer stone found, which means that they either used antler and or soft hammer stones exclusively for roughing out these preforms. Carper just allows me to do this more quickly for the video. See the edges are this is a natural bevel here, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. Grind it a little bit. I just grind the edge uh, back and forth on the concrete block. I just on both sides. So you can see how that's ground a little bit. remove some mass. What I want is to have plenty of mass in the middle and thinned on the tip and the bottom or the proximal and distal end. I think I did that wrong. I think the distal end is up here which is the point and the proximal end is the uh, base. Still removing cortex. I've got that nasty crack I've got to eliminate. And I'm using long thinning flakes from the end, like the originals. And I'll be using long thinning flakes from the sides as well. Right now, where I've got thickness in the middle, I'm going to do the end flakes first. Okay. 
I'm going to take care of that crack near the tip here. This is my uh, one of my new hammer stones. This quartzite, it's hard. I'm not going to be using it very much in the video. I'm just abrading the edge so I can remove that spot that has a lot of uh, jagged edges here. Let's see if we can let's see if I can take this off without losing too much length. One more flake across, and that direction should do it. Okay, that's good enough. And then I'm going to thin the middle. Well, let me do this first. What I want to do is make the base look very similar to the tip. So I've got to remove a mass off the off the top and bottom here to thin it down. Should be able to, to hit that platform, run a flick across and flatten that out. Just zigzag this problem spot there. The trick is not to lose too much length. The original nappers or the Clovis nappers started with a very big primary biface. They weren't too worried about losing length. I just quickly ground around the whole thing. Just one more little hump there and should be done with the base for now. Okay. Let's get rid of that there. Okay, now I'm going to start thinning the sides. So that, that's what I call a secondary biface at this stage. Now it can be heated, heat treated at this stage, or we can, uh, or I can wait until uh, it's further down the road. But this is raw now, and I'm just going to go ahead and finish it out raw. Try to remove long flakes as long as I can across, and maybe there'll be a, a few overshot flakes, but uh, 
on the originals only 5% of the flaking on these primary and secondary bifaces were overshot flakes so although overshot flaking was utilized it wasn't dependent on uh, most of the flakes were not overshot flakes 95% of the flakes on these Clovis primary and secondary bifaces were not overshots These are barely uh, going to halfway, but that's fine. I don't want to lose much thickness during this process. You'll see why in a little bit. Pressing the edge now for the next series of long flakes. Now there's a lot of mass here. So I'll work on that. There's a lot of mass right there, and there's a a lump right here. There's also some hinging going on there. I'm going to shoot a flake from here down to try to remove that hinging in that mass here. So I'll prepare a platform right there. Usually I would just go ahead and haphazardly just attack the, the, the uh, high spots, but I want to send long flakes for this for this process because that's what they did on the originals. They they kept their technique of uh, running long flakes throughout the process. Uh, which also includes the fluting and some of the overshot flaking. So they favored the long, a few long flakes to thin the point instead of a lot of little thin flakes, you know, in, at random. They, this process is a little bit random, but the platforms are prepared carefully. To save time, I'm just going all the way around looking at weak areas and strengthen those areas but I'm going to hit there and try to run that large flake here and I'm not going to explain the entire process I just want to explain the uh, the differences from this style that, uh, and my other style my previous style firm contact That was good. It cleared off some of those hinges there, but it, let's see if we can run a longer flake next time. Too bad. Kind of narrow. I'll try again. So I did a series of smaller flakes. I, I couldn't really get a long one, but it's not that important. I do need to remove that hinge there.
Okay, this might give me some trouble. It doesn't look too bad though. I'm gonna go ahead and just nap it out and not uh, narrate too much. The thickness looks good. The uh, edge looks good except the middle needs a little bit of work. But around the edges there aren't step fractures or crushing. I can develop platforms anywhere I want. And this is going to be made considerably more narrow, so this will not be a problem. I'm going to cut this section off right here at uh, 21 minutes, so it won't take forever to upload. And I'll continue on the next one.